reconciled. From this part of the lesson, we have seen how old nature is utterly depraved, depraved, that man cannot know God, he cannot love him, nor can he obey or even receive him. Can, can, I, can I go ahead and just repeat that a little bit? Yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. I just want to... <laughs> we, we didn't start our video recording, so I'm just going to repeat what I just said, just in case you didn't get the first time. Uh, sorry, you guys on YouTube. But um, what, I, what I said was is that the first part of what Josiah's been teaching us is that there's two viewpoints that you're either uh, making all choices, which is Arminianism, it's Arminianism, which is all you making that choice on your salvation. Nothing as far as God's concerned. It's all on the human to make their choices or not make their choices. And then the other side that swings completely to the other side is that God is completely sovereign. He knows who he's going to choose, and period, whoever he chooses is choosing. There's no choice in human aspect on our part. It's all what God has chosen. And there's churches that actually rip and divide on this principle. And yet, scriptures back both. What this should tell us is that God is sovereign, and he understands everything that everyone's going to choose long before they choose it. He already knows who's going to, but he gives equal opportunity to everybody to come to Jesus Christ, right? Everyone has that choice, but God in his sovereignty already knows that. And what does this mean? It means that we can trust God. He's beyond our intellect. We don't lean on our own understanding, but on every word that comes from God. And we, we have a lot of mysteries in Scripture that show us God's beyond us, right? So these are both. We should never argue or divide about this. This is never a principle the church should be ripped. And I've seen father come against son and son against father. And churches literally split over this precept. Let's not ever do that. Let's take the Scriptures in their fullness and believe both. Where we don't understand, trust the Lord in faith. Amen? Good job. Um, concerning the natural man, um, concerning the natural man, how many are able to understand spiritual truths, and how many will seek after God? Romans three eleven, which is none. And Romans three three eleven reads, "There is none that understandeth; there is none that seeketh after God." According to First Corinthians two fourteen, what does the natural man call the things? Um, of the spirit of God is foolishness and that and um, Romans 3.11 oh, I'm sorry verse 2.14 reads uh, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Holy Spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned um, and the second question is why can't we understand them? And as the last phrase of that verse was, uh, they are spiritually discerned. Amen. Concerning those things, or concerning those who become sons of God by receiving Christ and believing on his name, John 1.13 states, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. We are not born again because of blood relationships, in other words, just because our parents are Christian, this does not automatically make us one. Neither are we saved through the will of the flesh. The word flesh is another word for the old nature. This is saying that we are not saved by a decision of our old, ungenerate, or un ungenerate will. Neither are we saved by the will of man. In other words, we are not saved simply because other men say so. Instead, this birth is of God. God does not, or I'm sorry, excuse me. God does this by giving us the new nature that enables us to believe. Theologically speaking, regeneration, which includes the impartation of the new nature, takes place before believing. Practically speaking, they both occur in the same instant. This truth is given in 2 Thessalonians 2.13. God has from the beginning chosen due to salvation, through sanctification of the spirit and belief and truth. Sanctification of the spirit speaks of the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit at the new birth. The term sanctification speaks of the setting apart of the believer from the world unto God. This is our position in Christ. Note that sanctification of the spirit comes before Belief of the truth. Belief of the truth. How can we say that 
Or how can we say then that both the whosoever will and election passages are true? It is true that whosoever will will may come, but it is also true true that the natural man, apart from the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit, cannot and will not receive Christ. This is because the old will is deadened toward God. It is only those who have experienced the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit who will believe, and this belief takes place at the time of regeneration. These are the ones spoken of in the whosoever will passages, for these are the ones who desire and will to come. These are also the elect ones. The fact that you have received Christ shows that you are one of the elect. And that, you have, and that you have been chosen from before the foundation of the world. John 6, 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. All that the Father giveth me tells, the, tells of God's election. Him that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. It's saying that whosoever will may come. And witnessing to an unsaved person, it is best to talk about the whosoever will verses. For the unsaved mind has difficulty in comprehending election. But when he enters the door of salvation, he can look back on the other side of the door and see chosen from the foundation of the earth. Amen. What we have been speaking of above is an important truth, and it is good to learn it early in the Christian life. It affects the way we look at things and the way we deal with people about their need of Christ. However, not all believers accept this doctrine and it is, and it should be pointed out that this is not necessary to believe in the doctrine in order to be saved. This issue is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. It is not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that he has predestined you from past eternity and thou shalt be saved. It is the belief in Christ that saved you and not the mechanisms by which we came to that belief. The conflict between the two natures. We mentioned earlier that there is a potential battle between the old and new natures. This warfare is described in Galatians 5, 17. The flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit lusted against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Pentecost says the, world, the, the word flesh in Galatians 5, 17 refers to the sum total of the individual's personality, his mind, his heart, his will, all corrupted by the fall. The word, the word spirit in Galatians 5.17 refer, refers to the Holy Spirit living in the child of God and expressing himself in the new creation. The new capacity of the mind, the new capacity of the heart, and the new capacity of the will. Galatians 5.17 gives a way to be victorious in this battle. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, I think it's Woolis translates this, be constantly conducting yourself, yourselves in the sphere of the spirit. This means to constantly depend upon the Holy Spirit to live through you and control you in every thought, word, and action. Woolis' entire translation of Galatians 5, 16 through 17 is as follows. Be constantly conducting yourselves within the, the sphere of the spirit, and ye should not fulfill the craving of the flesh. For the flesh has constantly a strong desire to suppress the, the spirit, Amen. and the spirit has a constant. I'm sorry, excuse me. And the spirit has a constantly a strong desire to suppress the flesh, and these are entrenched in the permanent attitude of opposition to one another, so that ye may not do the things that he would desire to do. We, we shall learn 
more of this conflict in the next lesson as we look into the area of temptation. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. So, so yes, yeah, Josiah is doing an awesome job. And I want you to continue to encourage him in every way you can because God's got his hand on this man. And so I want to see, I'm excited to see how he grows. Um, but just to recap in this principle, these are important, guys, because we struggle. Don't we? We do the things we don't want to do. We don't do the things we know we should. Nevertheless, Paul says, not I, but sin that dwells within us. This old nature is still there. The mind, as it said, the will. My will is not conformed. My heart is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it, the Lord said. He can know it. We must yield in the spirit. We must walk by faith. Hear the word of God and move in it. And when you move in his power, when you move in his word, you're going to have victory. You're going to have, it's when we take our eyes off of the Lord and his power, let go, let God, and we start to move in our strength. I reason better than you, God. I got this. That's when we're headed for a fall. Amen? And by the way, many good men, many good women, long before you have fell many times. But the Bible says as many times as a good man falls, he gets back up. Why? Because God lifts him back up in his sovereignty. As soon as you turn back to the Lord, as soon as you start walking back in the Spirit, you're made whole again. Period. Do not let Satan beat you up over this. That doesn't mean we don't have a will that we need to grow in. Amen? We need to learn to grow in this so we're not falling all the time in the same thing again and again and again. Then we're blaspheming God, aren't we? We're saying, I really got this, Lord. Thank you for saving me, but I got this from here on out. No, we need him before salvation. We need him just as much now, every day, every moment. Amen? So thank you so much, Josiah. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for, for at least bringing some semblance of understanding to this duality of our existence while we're here on this earth, Lord, the, the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that you're, you're in control. Your sovereignty rules and reigns despite our choices, yet nevertheless, you allow us to partake in salvation, to partake in the, the act of sanctification and being set apart, to, to partake in the act of growing by making sound choices, by choosing you each step of the way. And I thank you for that, Lord. Your love is never-ending and perfect and awesome. Please be with us, your children, Lord God. Help us not forget these things as we walk from here. May we live them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all on Zoom. We'll be back 1045.